Okay, computer science 150, uh, first lecture, introduction to algorithms. This is kind of going to be a brief overview of the uh, concepts of algorithms that uh, are explored in chapter one of the uh, textbook that we're using and are fundamental to the field of computer science itself. So uh, let's get started with our fall semester or spring semester, as the case may be. So what is computer science? Well, you know, it's kind of helpful to talk about what computer science is not. And there are some misnomers as to what it is that we actually do as computer scientists. It's not necessarily the study of computers. Computers are certainly useful tools, but computer science is no more the study of computers than uh, chemistry would be the studies of beakers and test tubes or um, uh, physics and astronomy would be the tele uh, study of telescopes or of uh, devices to perform uh, physics experiments. Um, it's not necessarily a study of how to write programs. Uh, writing programs is tremendously important, and we do a lot of that in computer science, but it's more than just the writing of the programs. You know, is the program that you've written, um, you know, efficient for the task? Is it correct? Uh, how good are the results that you get from that program. Uh, these are related questions that don't necessarily have to do with the writing of the uh, program itself. And then uh, sometimes people will look at computer science as the use of application programs. Uh, for example, word processing, spreadsheets, video games, image processing, etc. And, you know, it's definitely an important skill to have. The more applications that you know how to use and uh, use well, the uh, more valuable you are in your career. But it goes a bit beyond uh, just being able to use application programs. So, what is computer science? Well, computer science is really the study of algorithms, and that leads us to a related question, well, what is an algorithm? And as an informal definition, we can say an algorithm is a sequence of instructions to solve a particular problem. And if we can specify an algorithm, then we can automate the solution to that. And that's good because we can get someone else or something else to do it. So we call that someone or something else a computing agent. And as long as the computing agent is able to understand and perform the instructions, they can carry out the task if we can make an algorithm for it. Uh, you know, and the computer agent could be human, uh, you know, it could be a kid, brother, or sister, a niece, or a nephew, uh, a robot, or it could be a uh, computer itself that's uh, doing that. So what is the uh, status of algorithms? How are we doing with our study of this? Well, you know, there are actually some things that you can't solve. And there are limits to any system of uh, mathematics that you can devise, uh, primarily due to Gödel's incompleteness theorem. But in computer science, there's a program called the halting problem that has no algorithmic solution. And it doesn't mean, hey, you know, just the smartest person hasn't come along yet and solved that problem. It means that we can actually demonstrate that this uh, problem has uh, no solution. Anything that's similar to that problem will also not have a solution. So there are some limits to what we're able to do computationally. Uh, some problems have no tractable solution, and we know the solution to it. But the solution itself would take so long that in some cases it would extend beyond the amount of time that we have left in the uh, universe in order to solve it completely. These are known as brute force algorithms. Uh, things that fall into this category are things like the busy beaver problem or uh, Hamiltonian paths. Uh, we know the solutions to those, but uh, we just don't have enough time left in the universe to uh, complete computing them for a large enough problem. You know, for a small problem, you know, say, uh, you know, five node Hamiltonian path, yeah, we can definitely solve it uh, and, you know, get done with it uh, before we pass away. But, uh, you know, when we extend that to, you know, 100 or 1,000 nodes, uh, there's uh, absolutely uh, no chance. Uh, some problems where we don't necessarily know the algorithm or we can't specify it, uh, these are artificial intelligence problems. For example, how do we perform facial recognition? We're very good at that as humans. We can look at uh, each other's faces, recognize, you know, if it's somebody that you know, you know, whether they're happy to see you, uh, whether they're, uh, you know, in a good mood, maybe, you know, they're feeling down, but we're very good at that. Uh, we just don't know how we specify that we know how to do that. And those are, um, you know, problems where artificial intelligence can oftentimes help us out. 
So the good news is, is in this class, it's an introductory class, we're going to study algorithms that are known and they're for solvable problems. So, you know, we can worry about these a bit later in your study of uh, computer science, but for right now, we'll uh, stick with uh, some of the pretty easy ones. So a formal definition of an algorithm is a well-ordered collection of unambiguous and effectively computable instructions that produce a result and halt in a finite amount of time. Ideally. Um, there's a, you know, some slight differences if you have that definition saying halt in a finite amount of time or uh, can continue for an infinite amount of time, in which case it becomes a computational method, but it's a, uh, you know, small distinction that you can uh, debate the uh, semantics of if you're into more of the philosophical side of things. But this is a good formal definition. And when we meet in class, we'll talk about what's important in that definition. And as you look at the uh, slides here, you know, what things stand out to you as uh, being important components of that definition? Why are they important components of that definition? Uh, so this is not an algorithm. Um, here we have a uh, recipe. Uh, we're going to add flour until the paste is sticky. We're going to knead it until it's firm, roll it out and uh, until it's thin, and cut it, bake in a medium oven until light brown, and then we're going to place it on a rack until it's cool. You know, this could be a you know portion of a bread recipe. Uh, and there's some things that doesn't say. How much flour are we adding? What does it mean to be sticky? You know, what does it mean to knead? Uh, what are we kneading? Uh, what is firm? What is thin? Uh, how do we cut it? Uh, what is a medium oven? And, you know, what temperature in the medium oven? Uh, what is light brown? And, uh, you know, what constitutes cool? So, you know, there needs to be some more specificity here. This one's also not an algorithm. Um, this one you may have seen on the back of a shampoo bottle. Apply a small amount of shampoo to hair, work in the scalp for about one minute, rinse thoroughly, and repeat. Um, this one's probably even worse because, again, you have lack of specificity. What's a small amount? Uh, what is thoroughly? But this one also repeats and doesn't tell you uh, when it's going to terminate. So this one might fall under computational method for uh, cleaning your hair, but I don't think you'll ever uh, finish up because there's no condition that uh, allows us to terminate this uh, method here. So how do we put algorithms together? Well, we have a three types of general instructions. One are sequential instructions that we do in order. Uh, you know, get out of bed, uh, you know, put on a clean set of clothes, uh, brush your hair, and uh, go down and get your car keys and head out the door. Uh, conditional instructions, if you're going to the store, you'll take Highway 19. Otherwise, you can take the main road. Um, iterative instructions is while there are more hungry guests, uh, feed the next guest. So keep doing something until a terminating condition happens. But these are the uh, three types of statements that we'll come across in our algorithms. So computer science studies algorithms. We look at their uh, development, uh, their formal and mathematical properties. Uh, their software realizations, uh, how they interact with hardware, and their applications. So as an example, uh, design algorithm would find the perimeter and area of a rectangle. Well, we know the area is length times width, and the perimeter is uh, two uh, times the length plus two times the width. Or, you know, you take all four sides and add the length of them together. Uh, the definition here of perimeter equals two times length plus width is a bit more formal. And of course, area is length times width. So how can we do this? Well, you know, as an algorithm and not necessarily as a computer program, one, we can get the length of the rectangle. We also need to get its width. So that's step two. From there, we can find the perimeter using the equation that we had on the previous slide, two times the length plus the width. And then find the area uh, with the equation, which is equal to length times width. We can also um, you know, specify a final step of uh, outputting the results or giving back the information. But this would definitely calculate it. So one of the things then you'll find in computer science as you, journey, you know, take this journey is when you're writing algorithms, you don't always get it right at the same time. I certainly don't. Um, and, you know, there can actually be problems uh, 
even if it you know compiles and runs that you don't see until you actually try uh, following it. Um, you know, for example, um, in our little bread making uh, routine that we had there, not an algorithm. Um, you know, there's uh, forgetting the step of letting the bread rise or asking for a quarter cup of salt instead of a quarter of a, uh, teaspoon. You know, so you can have uh, problems, you know, specifying things uh, and different, you know, things that uh, don't necessarily work out. And don't worry, everybody, you know, has uh, little things that go wrong from time to time, but uh, we get very good at finding those uh, mistakes. And those mistakes are generally uh, called bugs. And it's an error in your algorithm, or at least how it's written, that causes something different to happen than what you intended. And the uh, term actually comes from early computer scientists who found insects. Uh, these uh, notes uh, that appear here on the slide are from uh, Grace Hopper, who was the one who termed the, coined the term bug. And you can see in her notes, it says, first actual case of a bug being found. And she actually taped the uh, moth that had uh, uh, attached itself to the vacuum tube and caused the uh, vacuum tube to uh, burn out. And so that's where we get the uh, term bug. And that's the actual little historical thing from 1947. Uh, so we actually still have the first computer bug on record. Uh, so we spend a lot of time fixing these uh, bugs. And that process is called debugging. And, you know, again, everybody writes buggy algorithms, even the uh, best computer scientists. So, you know, being good at finding the problems and figuring out how to fix them is uh, a key to being successful at computer science. And that's it for today. Um, thank you very much.